Well, the outside of our house is finally, finally ready to paint. All of the siding, all of the flashing, the trim pieces, the doors and the windows, everything's in and the colors are picked out and the sun is shining and it's time to paint this thing. Now right off the bat, this house is not a typical or a routine house to paint at all. First of all, in the elephant and living room is, as it has always been, the details associated with the eaves and the overhangs. Because they're tricky. The vents have to be protected, the raw wood has to be primed, the primer keeps the oils and tannins from bleeding through the paint. And then second, the overhangs themselves are a different color than the body of the house. And so there's a lot of masking and brushwork and protecting of other surfaces that just has to be done. And we did not use a latex paint, but rather a full bodied stain by Arbor Coat in order to let the characteristics of the wood remain visible. As soon as we put a first coat on the overhang, we realized that we were going to have to spend some time filling some of the worst of the holes in the raw wood. I mean, there were knot holes and splits and the, you know, the typical defect that happens in a, in a board that is not intended to be interior finish work. And with the light color, anything that was a hole was going to be black. And so we had to spend some time with an oil-based exterior spackle filling the worst of those defects. Not all of them but just enough. For the last 50 years, when you think of painting, you think of spraying. That's because the majority of paint is sprayed on the surface. I don't care whether it's steel fabrication or Stucco, I, I, it just doesn't matter. It's sprayers that put on paint. And in fact, it's airless sprayers nowadays that put on paint because they generate so much less overspray. But a painter still has to be able to get the work done with a brush or a roller. And these guys are no exception. Now just a word about airless paint sprayers. They are terrific and with practice a painter can work magic with these things but there are some maintenance issues and you've got to use the right tip for the job. Tips are designated with a three digit number. Now right here Nick is using a 515 tip. The 5 speaks to how wide the fan of paint is when the gun is held 12 inches from the surface. And, in a very counterintuitive way, the 5 is half of the fan width. So a total coverage of about 10 inches is what you can expect when you're about a foot away from the surface. The 15 describes the diameter of the orifice. It means the diameter is 15 thousandths of an inch. That's not very big. Now for fine finish work it's even smaller because the interior moldings, 
that these fellows did for us were done with a 410 dual orifice tip. Smaller fan, smaller diameter, the paint goes on more evenly. For putting a lot of paint, maybe just on walls, like the sheetrocked walls inside, maybe they used, you know, a 619 or a 621. Bigger fan, more paint. Now you may remember watching Ryan backroll the paint on the walls and ceilings on the sheetrock. Really the first step on the painting process that happened inside the house. Well he's doing the same thing on the ceilings on the porches. The material on these ceilings is a plain face T111 rough sawn siding. It's been primed and lightly sanded. And once the sprayer has put the paint onto the ceiling material, the back rolling levels it out, makes the sheen or the texture or the appearance even, pushes it into the rough grain of the wood so that it has a good mechanical as well as a chemical bond and just makes the whole thing appear a lot more uniform. Back rolling is good practice when you can do it. There were a few places where the caulking had shrunk and had pulled back to where it was low in the joint. Joe's putting on a second pass and just generally keeping an eye out to make sure that all the caulking that I had done months ago was what it needed to be in order to get the finish that he was happy with. I'm really happy today that we painted these corbels before they were installed and we used an oil-based primer so the top coat is going on with very little trouble. We're painting the exterior and as far as that goes the interior with latex paint. Latex paint is a wonderful thing. It colors and tints perfectly to absolutely any color you can imagine. It cleans up with water and it sticks or weds is the term with paint to almost any primer. And the last thing is it loves to stick to hardy panel. The pre-prime on hardy panels gets a grip on latex paint.
general, lighter colors are easier to get nice, even coverage with than the darker, full-bodied reds or blues or greens, or in our case, blacks. I am a lousy painter and as I watch Nick and Ryan and Joe and Brock crawl all over this house I just marvel again and again how smoothly they pulled it all off there were no disasters at all there was no overspray on the black roof heck there was not even any overspray on the scaffolding there was no spilled paint on floors they somehow got a perfectly even application with every sort of tool in Oregon springtime weather, and I'm just dazzled by their skill set. Not only that, but they had great attitudes and were a pleasure to work with. Now, if I'm completely honest, I've got to admit that having a camera running increases your attention to detail. I mean, People are looking over your shoulder, and so you're going to do your best. But I've looked at other jobs that Four Seasons Painting has done, and they have the same attention to detail in every job that I've looked at. It's why they're on my job. And I've got to say, after watching these boys, they never let down their guard. For me, as I watched this and as I think about it and as I held my breath as the paint was going on, I realized that in many ways this exterior paint job was one of the trickiest parts of the whole project. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Mm -hmm.